and especially about experiences from uh, uh, service providers in, in, in cities connected also to the EOPS project. So Dreux, Kempten, Nijmegen, Leuven, Amsterdam, Manchester. And um, uh, we go in depth or more experience and talk about how we can tackle these kind of issues and how we can continue with that. During the break, I registered for uh, Cargrew. And I'm sorry for Cargrew, but it was quite easy, actually. <laughs> I was just not looking well. <laughs> so <laughs> too fast in my, uh, in my response there. Um, please join me on the stage. Niels Hagels from uh, Urbi, uh, Michael Wolf, uh, Dilfried, Michael Wolf. And Sven Iversen, again, join me again here. Oh, you switched. Yeah, we switched. Yeah. Come Please on. join us. Yeah. Um, you have prepared a presentation. No, what, what we actually did is that we made a list of topics that yeah. could be particularly interesting for the audience. Yeah. And I think with all of the topics, we have great stories from yeah. uh, the project. So what we'd like to do is a short introduction about the companies that we represent mm -hmm. and then show you guys the list of topics and then you pick a topic, we'll tell our stories and we take it from there. Amazing. Yeah, because in the whole session, this is the final breakout round uh, in, in this one and a half day uh, conference, we talked about all possibilities and all uh, parts of, of the broader discussion when it comes to, uh, uh, to hubs and changing uh, uh, mobility in such a way that we can build sustainable and livable cities. And in many of these scenarios, you are the cornerstone as suppliers in making sure that there is a viable alternative. True. Right? Yeah, we are actually the people on the ground, so yeah. to speak. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's hear it. We had all the other parts of it. Now the floor's up to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is Niels Hagels. I represent uh, Urbi. We are a mobility provider specialized in sharing e-bikes. We were founded in 2016. We developed our own bike. We developed a backend to, uh, to manage those bikes in the field. We developed an app. And we started um, to build sharing stations in Amsterdam. So our main focus until we joined the eOps project was in Amsterdam. Uh, we got as far prior to eHubs uh, as 60 locations in Amsterdam from which we were sharing roughly uh, 600 bikes. Uh, COVID unfortunately changed our business a little bit because we mainly focused on uh, stations close to businesses and obviously people were working from home. Uh, so our bikes were not really used in that uh, particular time. Uh, so we pivoted during COVID and we started to rent our bikes to uh, delivery companies such as uh, Uber Eats and Deliveroo, which you probably already know. Uh, so our bikes were temporarily used to deliver pizzas to people instead of uh, uh, providing mobility to, uh, to shared consumers in uh, a city. And uh, we kept doing that because it was really interesting and profitable uh, uh, for us. Um, so. We, together with Cargaroo, are uh, the initiators of the eHubs project. It's important to mention because we're very proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, and we'll, we'll talk about uh, what we do in more detail once we get started on uh, topics. Jeroen. Hi, Jeroen Bornstein from Cargaroo. Um, as Niels mentioned, uh, we started no, we, we started the project, of course, with other partners, so also with uh, a number of cities, a number of universities. But maybe it's a nice anecdote uh, to tell uh, why we started the project. Um, we were a bit later than, uh, than Urbi. We started in 2017. And that was just after the Chinese uh, influx of shared bikes. Uh, we found those bikes mainly in the canals and in the trees. <laughs> And the effect was uh, that after a very short period, the city of Amsterdam uh, forbid, forbid all uh, shared mobility. Um, and we had a policy challenge, um, getting permissions to place our cargo bikes. Uh, maybe a short intro about the cargo bikes. Uh, we, we see our cargo bikes mainly as alternatives for cars and, and small vans. So uh, our goal is to offer people the possibility to uh, go with a family or with goods that you need to transport, which you would normally use a car for. Um, and we found out that f uh, getting cities to allocate locations is quite a challenge. Uh, it's a lot of 
talking and policy discussions. And that's why we thought maybe it's smarter to put different modes of transport together because then we don't have to each individually have all those discussions with the city. So that's why we teamed up and that's how the, actually the eHubs project came into being. And at that time it was relatively new, I think the, the concept of an eHub and interesting to see that it actually not only took off in the cities that are participating but also in a much wider area. So many cities actually either looked at us or had the idea themselves also to, to start working with eHubs. So that's as far as the introduction. Uh, thank you, uh, Jeroen and, um, and Niels. And uh, I'm Michael Wolf from uh, Deelfiets uh, Nederland. And we are cooperating uh, within the project uh, since uh, last year uh, in Arnhem and uh, Nijmegen. Our company uh, started in 2018. We're creating, uh, uh, as we speak, uh, more than 100 uh, hubs in the middle, in the east and north of uh, the Netherlands. And that's where uh, uh, Urbi and Dilfus Nederland uh, found each other because Urbi uh, are doing their business in uh, uh, Amsterdam uh, region and we in the, the eastern of, uh, of Holland. So that uh, was a great uh, 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 way to, to work together and uh, to be uh, complementary uh, to each other. And uh, yeah, since last year, uh, we uh, are cooperating uh, within the project. And uh, why uh, is this project uh, uh, valuable for Dilfish Nederland? Because we uh, uh, made a decision to, to participate. And the way, uh, uh, why it's uh, for us an, an, an a valuable project is because um, uh, the, uh, most of our uh, e-hubs are uh, uh, in the public transport uh, 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 section. Uh, and for us, it was very interesting to be part of a project that br brought the e-hubs to the neighborhoods. So that's uh, a really great experience for us, uh, which uh, yeah, we want to share uh, with you today. Um, yeah, Dilfis ne uh, Netherlands, uh, short, um, is an, uh, an, an, um, a company which provides uh, station-based e-bike uh, hubs. Um, with the uh, hardware on the uh, on one side, uh, the, the bike and the smart locks, and the software uh, at the other side. And uh, not to, uh, to be uh, 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 a little more, <laughs> uh, I think it's one of the topics today, but we are um, uh, uh, more uh, aware of the value of the software part of uh, our proposition, which uh, we will uh, tell more about uh, in this uh, session. But I think that's uh, our unique uh, uh, value, valuable points in this uh, in this project. Great, yeah. So uh, as we said, we would we would like to to dig into a few operational issues that we have discovered while we uh, you know work together with the municipalities in this uh, in this particular project. And we've, uh, if we can have the next slide, we listed um, ten of them. And if you, if you guys have preferences of which one we should um, uh, deal with first, I'm not sure if they if can pull them up. The you decoration from the uh, here. Otherwise, I will, um, ah, here we go. Yep. Um, so th these are the, the, the 10 sort of themes that we would love to talk about. But obviously, if you have other questions about getting wheels or cargo wheels uh, on the streets, you can ask those too. So I'm going to read them out loud. Number one, approach, top down, bottom up. Number two, legal framework. Number three, location, so single or multi model, uh, model. Number four, power grid or battery swap. Number five, back to many, back to one. Number six, research. Number seven, interventions. Number six, usage, but also with COVID. And number nine, business case. And number 10, data. Yeah. Maybe I can add one element to number uh, three uh, locations. I think it's also interesting maybe to talk about uh, big hubs versus small hubs. Go ahead. Yeah. But we left, we leave the choice to the audience. Audience. Oh. So. Five. 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 Says five. <laughs> five is, and that's not someone, it's um, back to many, back to one. Oh, yeah, that's so a, what, that's what a very difficult one. Back to many, back to one. Let's start with that. Yeah. 
Well, the, the, the implications are tremendous. Yeah, <laughs> and maybe first to explain what, what does it mean, because yeah. that's a very important question. Uh, back to one is the model that we as CarGuru use. It means that uh, every uh, cargo bike has its own location. Yeah. Uh, and our model is that uh, people that use the cargo bikes, uh, they live near that cargo bike. They go out of their house, take the cargo bike, which is on the corner, and they also need to return it to the same location. That's back to one. Uh, back to many. Uh, back to many is uh, when you have multiple stations and you can take a bike from one station and return it to another station. That's back to many. Yeah. Yeah. So free, back to many is more free floating. Yeah. And back to one, you have to bring it to the yeah. same neighborhood, same place. Yeah. But yeah. free floating uh, means you don't even have to look whether there's a station. Okay. Why did you put it on the list, all of you? Well, I, I put it on the list because. Cause, um, I think as a shared mobility provider, back to one is really beautiful for the simple reason that your modalities always return for, to where they were picked up. So you don't have to do any distribution yourself to make sure that they're nicely divided over the network that you try to uh, maintain. Now, obviously, if you, if you turn the button and you make it a back to many uh, network, your bikes will go, you know, basically, everywhere. theoretically, everywhere. And that means like, you have to look every morning, where are my bikes and do I need to redistribute? Now, we, we put out a lot of bikes in Amsterdam already and we love the fact that nobody really screamed for back to many. And so we, we, we tried to keep it Don't back to it one. <laughs> and, then it, and then it was actually the municipality of Leuven. <laughs> we said, hey, Niels, you know, it becomes way, more, way nicer for the users and the people in Leuven if we make it back to many. So we thought, okay, well, one city with a back-to-many network might be very interesting, and we might be able to learn from that. And as the, the scale of Leuven with, with 40 e-bikes was not tremendous, we thought we can manage it. Little did we know that our system would only allow to switch it on or off for all the bikes that we had throughout all the cities. So by, by switching it on for Leuven, it meant that all of a sudden Amsterdam became back to many as well, as well as other cities where we were providing bikes. So the, the, the impact that we had by switching the button for Hilke was tremendous. Thanks. <laughs> uh, to, um, I want to go to Debbie back. first, because I want to know why you screamed quite enthusiastically that you wanted <laughs> to talk about back to many, back to one. I've been in a project for uh, five years and I knew this case. <laughs> and I, would, uh, I, I, I wanted Niels to share this experience because as a city, you uh, work together with your uh, mobility provider, and sometimes c cities don't listen to the information they have from experience. So uh, in this case, we learned from the different approaches, and I would like to uh, give them the opportunity to give back what they learned from the different um, systems. So if there are any cities in the, or uh, regional authorities in the, in the, in the um, audience, they can learn um, not only talk to uh, those who provide the bicycles, but also rethink the decision you make as you make as a city. Yeah, I'll go to Hilke if you don't mind, because you're one of the <laughs> people in uh, who who ran the project in Leuven. Um, is it true that you wanted to switch to back to many? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's very true. And I think with reason. I think we still. I think we listened to that, what Elna said in the, in the previous session. So for us, um, the objective of having e-bikes was really for the multimodal transport uh, trips. So we were really looking for locations at the station to, um, to the trip to the big uh, attractive points of, of employees so that mm. people really just arrive at Leuven Station, can take an e-bike, go to the hospital site, for instance, go and visit their patients and then, okay, come back and take the bike again. But the price, uh, if you just go and you, you take the bike at the station, you go to the hospital, you go and visit that patient and three hours later you come back, that's quite an amount of money. So that's why we just want to have it as a multi, as a back to many system, so that it's really um, interesting still um, for uh, price wise, because they have to compete and that's a very uh, important issue there's also the public, the OV fits, uh, yeah. uh, the public bike, the blue bike in, in at Leuven Station, which is not an electric bike. So, but you have to compete with that one, and, and you only pay three euro fifteen for that bike. So, 
that was really the, the reasoning we had um, to, get it, to get it used. We should go to a back-to-many system. Otherwise, the price would be much too high for the user. Yeah. And the difference between back to so there, in my mind, but please correct me if I'm wrong, there are three options. Then there's uh, fully free floating, so you can put it anywhere you want. Green mobility is an option here, at least here in Amsterdam, uh, with the downside that sometimes you have to walk quite a long way as a customer to get to your uh, preferred car. Then there's option to get from uh, one hub to another hub and leave it at the other hub. And the third option then is to to get to bring back your uh, your vehicle to the place where you got it. Yeah. And you chose you chose in Leuven for the uh, for the from from one hub to another hub. Yeah, for the for the e-bikes for the Urbis we use for the back to many system. Yeah. But we completely agree that the cargo system for the e-cargo bikes that the back to one system is ideal because they just have these local residents doing their trip, coming back to their place. So they're not really in the multimodal transport, but for the for the Urbi, it's really in a in a in a yeah first mile, last mile um, trip. So that made a difference for us. Thank you. Yeah, and and I think one of the learnings we took away from this, and and obviously we panicked when when Hilko was, you know, asking this from us, and we realized that all of a sudden we had hundreds of bike in a back to uh, many mode. Um, so every morning we would look at the, the locations of the bikes and we would slightly panic. But we've also learned that if you take a cup of coffee and you wait a little bit in terms of, you know, what's happening next, you will actually see that those bikes actually move as a swarm of bees. So they might go away in the morning and, and sort of the, the majority goes to the city center, but they will also come back eventually. So, so the advice... That, well, the lessons that we took away from it is just be patient a little bit, have a look, don't act immediately, uh, give it some time. And then in the end, we, we did have to do a bit, you know, a bit of distribution, but it's not a hell of a lot of extra distribution that when then, you know, the distribution we would do to service bikes or to replace uh, bikes. Mm -hmm. so, so all in all, the fact that, that Leuven pushed us to turn the button into back to many, uh, has been a great success because it's more flexible and it's more cost efficient because it's back to many. Uh, and in, in the end, it did not cause an awful lot of trouble, but it was quite scary in the beginning. There's one more question here. No, I, I'm glad you conclude in a positive way because to me, I think it's, it's really instrumental that we have this back to many option if we ever want these mobility hubs to be successful and be flexible and be used for the purpose that we want them to be used for. And if you want to compete with the big guys, you know, the one, the venture capital based global players, then you have no choice, basically. I that's think true. really. Yeah, that's true. Uh, also in terms of service uh, levels and quality, I think uh, you need to be able to compete with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's, there's this trend here from uh, the free floating providers and the station based the providers. We are a station based provider. Also the free floating provider are heading into the middle uh, and the, the hybrid, the hybrid uh, uh, way of uh, uh, creating a uh, bike sharing system. Yeah. yeah well, My question to Niels was, uh, did it mean more turnover when you go back to many? Um, no, not really. Oh. No, no, because it, it, you know, it is a bit of a balance, of course, because it's more, it's probably more interesting to use your network because uh, you're more you know, flexible in terms of cost and flexible in terms of uh, moving. Um, but at the same time, the great thing about uh, uh, back to one is, of course, like it, similar to what it works with Cargo, is that you, you, you use the bike the whole day. And then, of course, as, <laughs> if, if you have the bike under then you have to your pay bump, 15 you euros, have to pay. Right? You pay more, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's, it, I think looking forward, yes, it will be a better model to earn more money because it makes the network more usable but on the short term it kind of lost some uh, revenue on it depends on your target group exactly so depends on yeah. your target group yeah and um if you look at so the, the effect was perhaps more trips but people keep the bike for less time correct so it's a positive for the uh, for the for the consumer for the yeah. user and a, a neutral for you yeah okay but, ma but maybe can I add one thing about the user, uh, because there's also the aspect of uh, reliability for the user. 
Um, and the aspect of uh, free floating or back to many system is that uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, there's a swarm of bees. Uh, the swarm of bees goes to one end of the city. And that means if you want to use it in the other end of the city, you find no bikes. So that's the other uh, aspect of it. And I think also there is a uh, aspect from the city perspective. Um, and there is also a difference for cargo bikes, which are, of course, larger. Uh, if you find suddenly uh, an amount of 20 cargo bikes uh, all together <laughs> in one place, then no, nobody's going to be very happy, especially not from the city. So that's also an aspect. Yeah, that was exactly one of my questions. Um, how frequent was it that users were dissatisfied because they could not find a bike suddenly anymore at, this, at, the, at the station? Uh, yeah, we didn't have it because we have back to one. Try yeah. not to try to use this oh, sorry, yeah. microphone. <laughs> You're now too far away, but like one fist from the yeah. microphone is good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so we, we didn't have that experience because we have the back to one model. Uh, and that means you have all the, always have a certain amount of bikes in a certain neighborhood. Um, and there, there, is a, there are certain use cases that you cannot serve in that model. So people going to the station with their suitcase and then going on holiday is a model that, that we cannot serve. Um, but it was a deliberate choice because we found out that 85 of the use cases are back and forth for cargo bikes. That means 15% we don't facilitate, which is always a trade-off. Yeah. Oh, I, I still want to add something because obviously we have we collect data. We know exactly how many bikes are still there if they're all gone. So based on that data, you kind of can calculate how many bikes should be there in that location to overcome a situation where there's no bikes. So I think what one of the sort of fundamental elements of convincing people to start using f shared mobility is availability. Yeah. If they if they consider to leave their car for an electric bike or a cargo bike and they, they finally got their heads to it and they want to go and do it and there's nothing there, they're yeah. probably not going to try it for another six months because it's very disappointing. So to get this right, availability is really key. Um, and, but fortunately, we got the data. So we kind of know what's there and what's not there and, and when we should scale up a certain location in terms of you know, what's the ideal number of bikes there to make sure that there is availability always. Thanks. Question here. Yep. Thank you. Uh, yeah, talking about availability, I was also wondering uh, sort of the magnitude uh, of hubs that a city, for example, like Amsterdam would need in order to meaningfully uh, change uh, yeah, behavior in people. Uh, so I was wondering if there's also like a, a difference in amounts of hubs that have, I don't know, a car, then how many have like a, a cargo bike and how many have like a, a, a regular e-bike uh, to, to, yeah, to, to have an impact. Yeah, it's a good question because it's actually the um, sort of number three on our uh, on our list. So if if we wrap up number five, we can move to three, maybe. Yeah, is that it? <laughs> yeah, but we'll all, yeah just al that? answer the question and then uh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll go through the question. So it, it's it's very difficult um, to to give you like a format because it depends on on the location itself. Is it a, is it a business area? Is it a, is it a residential area? Is it a computers area? Is it a train station? So to 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 get the the ideal mix, you kind of really need to look into it and to to determine who are you going to serve in that particular area and what do they want from you. So there is not there's not really like a blueprint for you know th this is the format that you can use to 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 do a city. I mean I can be a little bit more explicit about Amsterdam because what we try to determine is how many electric bikes do we want to put into Amsterdam on how many locations to make like a working network that we feel is good. Uh, and we would we concluded it should be around 100 locations with at least a thousand bikes to make a, a proper network work. Just to give you an indication of 100 locations. Now we're 15. Yeah, well, Urbi itself already yeah. has 60 locations. So okay, we, we so kind of add a few to that. But um, yeah, so there needs to be more, of course. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's do a quick round because we have to go to the cities and we are uh, on, a, on, a, on a schedule, unfortunately. I want to go through a few questions for you, why you wanted to talk about that. The thing I was wondering with the uh, one-to-many model, how did this uh, connect with the battery swap uh, situation? So was it the same trip you had to make to do the battery swap to get to the other location, or was it completely different situations? 
Oh, battery swap. Okay, Le uh, we need to introduce yeah, the battery. Yeah, and really. Uh, okay, I'll uh, do it quickly. Yeah. So, so when we started in all the cities that we have bikes, we we said to the cities, "Oh, can we please have power because we want to mm -hmm. charge the bikes?" And for users, it's great if they can have a full battery because yeah. half uh, a half empty battery for a user does not give them the confidence that they can cycle. Yeah. So, at your locations. People can charge or have to charge their electric bike. Well, that's what we wanted. Okay. However, we discovered that getting power in the public domain is really, really hard. Okay. So Good. we started swapping. <laughs> okay. And then, um, yeah, there are so many things. Let's keep it for the Q&A because I want to go to the cities to get the extra dimension to that. Uh, we'll come back to you later, but for now, a big round of applause, of course, to Niels Hagels, uh, Miguel, Michael Wolf, and Jon Borestein. Thank you. Welcome. Um, join me, we'll do a switch. Hilke Evenepoel is here in the building, luckily, from uh, Leuven. And Jasper Meekus, Meekus uh, is joining us via Zoom. You both have been listening to all the uh, uh, stories for... Well, a lot of stories about the uh, which model works best. Just if you want to. <laughs> Close to me. That way, uh, well, we don't have to, but it's more intimate that way. Um, what was you, for both of you, uh, I was wondering, uh, and let's start with you, Jasper. Um, what was your experience with, uh, with the eHubs project and introducing the service of shared mobility to Nijmegen? That's a, a big question to start with. Um, yeah, I think I think our experience was was uh, was quite mixed. Uh, we we there were a few things that went very well. There were a few things that we that we noticed was uh, far more difficult than we expected. Uh, one of the things Niels just said, of course, with uh, with getting power to charge to, to charge the bicycles, for instance, well, that proved one of the main challenges in the entire project. Um, uh, in terms of uh, decisions that we had to make, and the way we 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 we, uh, we talked with the with the mobility service providers, I think in many th in many cases that went quite well. Um, but we also noticed that we had a, uh, quite a few uh, few issues in that sense. Yeah, and uh, Hilke, is that did you have the same experience in Leuven? Yeah, I think it's about the same. I I I think um, for the battery swap system, uh, the the power supply thing. Um, so I, I just want to go back to what I said yesterday. Um, it's a pilot project. Um, you just try to determine in the first phase which location might be really good locations for these kind of modes. And, and you know you can make some errors there. It's really trial and error. And therefore we thought from the beginning we should start as flexible as possible. And to to get that infrastructure, to get that power supply there, it's 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 really... A hustle, and it's really a difficult thing to, to get done. And therefore, we really decided to try it out first with a battery swap system so that we could just be as flexible as possible. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, for the Urbis, for the e-bikes, from the beginning, our plan was to have about 20 locations. Uh, we, we are having, like, uh, the idea was having 50 e-hubs, and we thought of having 20 locations, a network of e-bikes around to have it on a... Uh, back to many systems so that you really could have that network working because you need quite a lot of, of, of locations to, to get that network work. And um, so we, we, we thought to have like about 100 bikes, but then there was problems with, with availability of bikes. There was the big issue of COVID. And we, we, we mustn't forget that, I mean, uh, COVID has really put um, lots of, 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 yeah, of, of, of challenges on, on, on top of it. Um, and therefore, we actually decided that the, in, in midterm, we're going to try out to have about six locations with eHubs, the mm -hmm. network, the important network locations, and we're going to try out to have um, some, some power supply there. And so the, for, the, for the last couple of months, we have tried it out with a hybrid system um, so that at least the bikes could get charged m much more easily. And that worked um, much better then. But yeah, as a municipality, it's 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 a trial and error process, and um, so to keep it flexible in in a pilot stage, I think it's really important. And for both of you, but um, let's start with you, Hilke. Uh, the, the, when you look at the uh, the offers being introduced in cities for shared mobility, most of them are from companies. So how do you how do you um, like one of the sessions was yesterday? 
building a, a non-profit local uh, uh, sharing scheme. Is that something you had in mind during the process, or was it always to have a most broad option in all companies to uh, to service your uh, citizens? So do you? So I how, don't get your question very well. Well, the thing is that when you uh, introduce. For example, here in the city, uh, uh, when the only option for a taxi is Uber, and there is no TCA, which is the other uh, company here in the city that offers taxis, or one of the others, um, you have you're like forced shopping at Uber for a taxi. So how do you make sure that there are options for the citizens? Is that something you had in mind while planning the system to make sure that the users of the system have as many options as possible? Maybe one app was better, maybe one bike was better, maybe one other option was better or the price was better. Is that something you had in mind or is that something for a later date? I think if I, if I understand well your question, it's, it was also a matter of, of Irby and Cargo were partners within the uh, yeah. projects. So, and, and we were really happy to have these partners on board. Mm. So that made that we, we, we were up to work with cargo bikes and to work with e-bikes. Um, as Leuven, from the beginning, we have decided not to work with e-scooters uh, mm -hmm. um, because most of these operators still work in a free-floating system. In Leuven, we really want to have it very well organized, ordered um, in, in terms of, of, of safety, in terms of also space and, and, and uh, yeah, the urban space design. Just space is too scarce to, to have all these steps going on the, on the, on the, on the, um, pavement. On the pavement. Um, so that was already a big decision that mm -hmm. we only uh, are interested in, in, in bike systems. Um, so and then actually as a lesson learned now with 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 e-bikes, with um, e-hubs, um, for the Leuven case, we don't think that's that much of an additional value to have e-bikes um, within Leuven. Um, we are looking for for pioneering and piloting much more in, in, in direct um, cooperation with private enterprises to have that more complementary use, mm -hmm. but just have to have e-bikes on the public domain, um, knowing that we have the, the, the regular bikes, is not of that added value. That's one of the lessons we learned. So our um, council has decided not to uh, give that much priority in the near future to work much longer um, with e-bikes. Um, but we are testing much more with, with private companies. We don't exclude it yet. Yeah. But okay, that's that's one of the, the the interesting lessons learned, I think. Thank you. And how is it in Nijmegen, Jasper? Yeah, well, I think one of the things you're touching on is that as a municipality, you of course have a lot of goals in terms of uh, your policy. So we want to provide shared mobility for a number of reasons, and those reasons might not always be the same as the reasons for the private companies that are sharing their vehicles uh, to want to share their uh, vehicles. So that, that sometimes in the cooperation can be difficult. Um, I think if you're talking about uh, uh, providing multiple options for uh, people in the city, then um, I think you need to first make sure that you know that the system works. So mm -hmm. um, before you can actually take that kind of steps, uh, this project, of course, uh, the EF project is a pilot project. And so the first step was to actually uh, sort of make it a proof of concept and see, can we actually provide something uh, in public space that is used? And is that is that something that will that that we can move on from? I think in Nijmegen now we're moving on to a broader uh, policy on shared mobility, where uh, multiple uh, uh, parties can can offer their vehicles, and we can see how that works in competition as well. Yeah, so it really is the second step. These kinds of discussion for now was learning curve. You want to add something to that? Yeah, maybe that just that I want to add that it's really important to know that Leuven is also, as Amsterdam, it's really a cycling city. So most mm -hmm. of people do have their own bicycle. Um, do mm, There's many people having their own e-bike already. So it's um, the shared bikes are really for occasional uh, trips, not for, for that daily trip. So that's, I think, something very important to know. And then one of the big Polish... Uh, no, political ambitions of Leuven is, is really to work on that parking pressure. Um, and therefore, we believe that, as also Sven explained, I think, very well in the previous um, presentation, that the, the cargo bike can really replace that first or second private car 
And, and that's really having a direct concrete impact uh, on the public domain. And therefore, I think um, we, we rather take that priority. Yeah. Quite clear. Thank you. Are there cities here in the, uh, today here in Pakhaus who want to contribute to that? Or people in the audience who have experience with these kind of projects who want to add to that? I want to give the opportunity or perhaps questions from the audience? Yeah. Uh, thank you. The question is, uh, so you're talking a lot about kind of, you know, experimenting with these companies, kind of allowing them to do something in the city. What about looking, you know, for example, Barcelona, their Bissing program, which is uh, also hub specific, it's not free floating, it's been there for a really long time, and they work more in tender, right? So they offer a tender, and then actually to have some SLA and company comes in and has to deliver specific uh, KPIs. Yeah. What's the challenge with having something like this? Why not go that route? Um, so during the eHubs project, we yeah, we were working together with, with Airbnb Cargo as partners of the project. Um, as I just tried to say, so we have learned a lot. We have just um, set out our priorities. We are tendering now for the e-cargo bikes. So that's something that we are really are in now, so that we have got a continuous offer after the ending of, of e-hubs. Um, and therefore, we are looking at the concession of, of a duration of five years. Um, and within that duration of five years, we think, um, and, and the idea of Leuven is to subsidize a certain amount of the offer during the first three years. Um, so that we just can give the mobility provider that chance to overcome that risk during the transition period, um, but not to take that risk that after that the subsidy is finished, that the mobility provider just uh, um, collects their bikes and, and they go to the next city who is subsidizing. And I think that's really important so that you can come to a long lasting uh, form of cooperation with a clear um, service level agreement so that you, yeah. And Jasper, uh, did you tackle these kind of options in Nijmegen? Are you thinking about that for the future? Yeah, well, I think it's mainly something we're looking at for the future. Indeed, in the EAC project, um, uh, what we did is we opened it up for any party who could uh, uh, who could actually comply with uh, with the as uh, the access uh, um, requirements, uh, which were not that that stringent in that sense, but. Um, for now, we, we're for the future. We're working with a permit system. I think a tender system makes sense if you, as a municipality, are willing to invest in this as well. That you're saying, well, we are we we will pay a company to uh, uh, to place their vehicles uh, in public space for this amount of time. That's not something that we in Nijmegen at the moment see as our task. Mm -hmm. So we are more looking at we're using permits to limit the amount of, not, uh, of, of suppliers that, that can offer their vehicles here. Um, and for those permits, yes, there are a number of requirements that people that, that a company has to meet in terms of quality, in terms of service levels, etc. So that's something that's monitored through the permit system then. Thank you. There's a question in the audience, but not just from someone, someone who has a lot of experience with the topics, Debbie. We as, uh, we as the city of Amsterdam are currently working on a new shared mobility policy and I see a lot of cities tendering modality based, so a tender or a concession for bicycles, for cars. Uh, I had the uh, perception that with the eHubs project, uh, people were influenced when they see like shared mobility options together, uh, they will uh, decide not to take the car but take the cargo bike. Do you think, maybe it's a question to the city, but also to the mobility providers, that we should tender uh, not only on speci a specific modality, but maybe on a spot or an e-hub where we encourage the market to work together or actually uh, companies to make a, a special offer for that location? Or is this something that would not work in a city? So you're saying we should tender or give the permission to be at a certain spot in in instead of the whole city? Maybe just uh, the the, diff the difference. But I, I'm I'm looking to know more about um, the um, uh, possibilities of tendering uh, eHub instead of just one modality. Or Great. A combination of vehicles. So a combination of vehicles. Um, Hilke or Jasper, any response to that? Or perhaps also from the suppliers. Yep. Um, 
Oh, I was just going to say, from a, from a Manchester perspective, would that not be more difficult because you'd have multiple apps, potentially, for the end user? Um, also, don't you have to have a scale to make it profitable? And if you've only got, potentially, a few number of e-hubs, then you might not have the, the scale. It's just a... Anyone of you want to respond? Yeah, I think I think um, to to first come to Debbie's question about combining modalities um, in a tender. See, so, yeah, I think in in the end, if we want to improve shared mobility in general, we need to put effort and money in. So I, I guess if Yaron is trying to build similar network infrastructures in the city than I do, or uh, uh, somebody else that provides uh, shared mobility. We're kind of all doing the same, all applying for a yeah. permit, all trying to get some power there, all trying to get nice signing up. Uh, we all do different logos, so it's got to be confusing, complex, and it's got not going to have a, a clear identity. So I think in, in general, it's great to combine and to, to put the money more focused into a city network than to, to let everybody do their own thing. Because in the end, it's going to be more integrated and it's actually a great operational bridge to something that's already happening technically in the background, which is mobility as a service. So eventually, we're going to use all those modalities in one app anyway. So why not have them combined and clear in one location that has multiple facilities, maybe not only uh, the wheels, but also the postal package uh, cupboards and maybe other services that can be combined on well, such a location. When you look at, like, from a societal point of view, <laughs> um, uh, that's my job, I guess, uh, but also your jobs, um, if you look at these kind of systems, there are basically three ways of doing this. You can leave it fully to, uh, to the market, it's basically the American system. So whoever comes first takes over the whole market and the we give away free space on the street, but also in the digital public space. You can do the fully controlled version that it is perhaps an app from the city government where all the providers should be in there. And there's the third option, and that is more like the in-between option, where the city government still controls who is able to operate in the city, but several operators are able to come in. So which would you prefer? Um. So I think the last one would be the best one for me. Um, sorry, the last one would be the best one for me because it, 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 um, it, it leaves room for flexibility. So I think what we have um, seen in Leuven, for example, where um, uh, Leuven adopted uh, a, a hop-in concept, which mm -hmm. is, a, is, is basically a sharing concept for multimodal um, sharing operators in Belgium that will kind of, in the end, have to work underneath that one brand. That there you'll see that there is uh, not an awful lot of space for refinement uh, on a local level. So I think the, the, the beauty of keeping it flexible but organized is that you can refine uh, for neighborhoods, for uh, well specific needs, which keeps it a little bit more flexible. So I think that the last one would be the yeah. best one for me. And Hilke and Jasper, feel free to, to interject if you have uh, feel need to, to, to add to that. Um, yeah, if I may then. Yeah, yeah, go if ahead. If I may interject, because uh, one of the things I think uh, Debbie was also, also, also referring to was also this question of whether the fact that you can see the, the various uh, modalities at the same location, whether that actually it changes the choices that people make. And I think that's one of the intriguing things about EAPS is the question, if people can at the same location uh, rent an electric car or an electric cargo bike or an electric bike, will they then make a different choice than they would if they have to go to different locations or if the, if, if the things are not offered in, in the same location? And it's, it's something that we're looking at in our behavioral change approach to really see whether we can see how people respond to that and if they think that... that uh, that the fact that they're all in one location really changes their choices. But so far, I haven't seen really clear answers to that. But that is really what you need to to uh, make sure that you want e-hubs and not just shared mobility. And I think that's still an important question we need to answer. Yeah, Maybe. I think what, what ties into it is that Amsterdam was actually the bottom-up city, right? Giving, giving uh, the people in the city a menu from which they could pick what they want. So, so it, it, it would always be interesting to hear from Amsterdam whether that has been a success. Were people actually able to, to pick the right modalities from the menu and were, were they happy once those modalities were in their neighborhood? 
or did they feel maybe they made the wrong choices because um, you know a car looks nicer than a cargo bike or a normal bike and therefore they picked the car but actually they needed a cargo bike um. oh. <laughs> it's good for my condition it's like for my health well as far as I can see based from the questionnaires we um, implement per neighborhood is that people often uh, comment that it's really nice that they now have a car at their uh, in front of their house or a cargo bike. I it, I don't really feel like they they see it as like a combination of multiple multiple modalities. It's always either the car, the the e-bike, and then each for its own purpose. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. So far, not really. No. So it's not a, I want to have access to all different kinds of models, but I would like to have a car. I don't own a car, so I rent a car. Yeah, maybe that's because uh, most people already have a bike. Yeah. So a car would be adding uh, their options. Uh, or uh, they have a bike, but no cargo bike, and they aren't really keen to use the car. They don't need it for their purposes. So... It's always adding up to the bike they have or the car they already have uh, and not really like a combination uh, of uh, a solution for them. Thank you. Um, uh, can I add one thing? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I think it's also good to realize that uh, people have fixed patterns in their life. And so what Banu said, I recognize that some people will use uh, always use a shared car. Uh, and some people will always use an electric bike and some people will always use a, a, a cargo bike for, for specific uh, use cases. So if they go to the uh, hockey field and they need to take uh, two kids and, uh, and three hockey sticks, uh, they, they will rather use a cargo bike or a car than an electric bike. And for other cases, you will use an electric bike. Uh, I also think it's good to have different operators because <coughs> different modes uh, are kind of specialized. And the usage ca use cases are different, so I think it's uh, because you see also in, in foreign cities where they, where cities give one license to one operator to do everything multimodal, uh, and there is some risks in that that you will see the operators promote the mode that they make the most profit on, mm -hmm. uh, which might be scooters or or cars, and usually not the active modes because that uh, makes less money generally. Uh, and also, it's uh, yeah, it's kind of a, uh, a specialized business. Uh, we are specialized in cargo bikes, so we we know exactly how to approach the target group, how to market it. Uh, and if you do electric bikes, uh, yeah, it will be slightly different, for sure. We're almost at the end of this session, and thereby of the end of the conference. But there's room for one more question from the audience. Anyone who, yeah really wants to add to the whole discussion. So obviously we're asking questions about how users feel about certain things, but we don't have answers. So are you and the researchers and academics thinking about surveying uh, participants as this goes along and not just at the, at the end of a certain project and evaluating? And how often are you doing that? Are you actually testing and looking at whether it's demographics or actually calling up users and, and asking them some of these questions. What does that look like? We, we do lots of surveys, so we, uh, but that's not for the e-hubs, but it's for our, our own mode of transport. And I think there is also quite a lot of research being done and has been done in the e-hubs project. It has, by yeah. uh, Newcastle University, yeah. TU Delft, and of course the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences and Antwerp University, all on this topic. Um, at Dilfus Zeeland, we are uh, uh, at the moment uh, piloting with uh, projects where we can uh, um, uh, facilitate closed user groups. Uh, because all the systems right now uh, in the cities are open for everybody. Mm -hmm. But what I miss in this discussion is um, uh, the focus on the target group. And when you use, uh, if you, you create a closed user group, you can really focus on uh, several target groups, uh, for example, uh, employees of a hospital, um, uh, colleges, uh, or something like that. We are piloting with disclosed user groups uh, to facilitate just this target group, and uh, that's a way of thinking uh, that is new, I guess, and uh, really worth piloting. Yeah, perhaps the next round, 
yesterday at the end of the evening of, 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 the, of the afternoon, of course, we, I talked with um, Esther Venendaal, uh, who is the national lead here in the Netherlands when it comes to the internet. But perhaps people from the Netherlands can mail her and people from other countries can mail her colleagues in the different countries to continue with the project. Thank you. Um, we're almost at the end. I want to give you all the chance uh, to, 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 for the last word, especially you, Jasper, and Hilke. Is there something you would like to tackle in your experiences with, uh, in, uh, with this project, and especially going forward, how are you going to look at these kind of topics? You already shared quite a lot, but perhaps we missed something? No, I just want to um, maybe put emphasis on what you said last. So eHubs was the first piloting project, but we are not there yet. There's still some and much work to do and much uh, research to do. Um, so we hope we can really continue and, and pilot further on different modes on the on, on, on the way what, what, what users think and what users demand. Um, so still some work to do. Yeah. And Jasper? Yeah, I think it ties into the last question, which is I think one of the one of the largest values of the project is also all the research that we're doing in the project, not only through Newcastle University, but also in terms of behavioral change. Uh, uh, the the applied university, of, uh, the University of Applied Sciences in Amsterdam, is doing a lot in that. We in Nijmegen hired a specialized bureau to look at behavioral change. That's also. Uh, uh, taking interviews with users, uh, using our digi panels uh, from the cities to, to send out surveys among people and see what their experiences are, uh, both in a qualitative and in a quantitative sense, to try and see what we can get in terms of the the, the evaluation of the EAP project. So I think that's the, the largest value of the entire project, really the, the amount of information that we're gathering through all of our efforts in, in all the cities combined. Thank you. Let's keep it at that. We have a lot to talk about after this moment, and of course we're gonna do that. This is, uh, to me, it was a quite interesting uh, uh, two days with a lot of new ideas, a lot of new uh, topics to talk about, but also a, a multi-headed monster when it comes to the complexity of the topics we want to talk about. When it comes to uh, 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 getting everyone involved, we want to really get the climate uh, neutral cities going, but also making sure that the business case work and making sure that you don't put people or force people into one business case or another. Quite complex, quite a lot of things to talk about and luckily we can do that in many more levels. I would like to thank you for being here uh, these two days and joining us in Amsterdam. I would like a special thank you to the people organizing, of course, Banu and uh, uh, Yet and Job from the city of Amsterdam. Of course, also uh, from the people from my team here in Pakhuis, uh, uh, Lisanne and Bono. You've, I'm not sure if you've seen them all day, but <laughs> Lisanne is over there. She's been working for quite a long time. But of course, also to uh, uh, Karen's team from uh, uh, Polis, to Interreg, of course, to all the cities connected, so Nijmegen, Dreu, uh, Kempten, Amsterdam, uh, Manchester and Leuven. And of course, to all the speakers and people who come here. So thank you so much. I was, uh, it was a pleasure having you here and enjoy the rest of the day. A uh, quick practical thing, the lunch will be on the second floor. There will be coffee. <laughs> and uh, afterwards, there is one more chance to take a visit to the Marine Terrain. Enjoy the city and enjoy your time here. And uh, hopefully see you soon. Bye. <laughs>